Hello and welcome to the Pathfinder Show. Speaking to mind, body, and spirit. I am Tony Gorman, your host, and today's show is being brought to you by Halois Ridley, speaker for Family Concerns. Are you someone that is about to embark on the college journey or do you know of someone that is? If so, today's show is for you. And I have someone here today who's going to help you with that. And her name is Kathleen Stark. Kathleen, welcome to the show. I'm very excited to have you here. Thank you, Tony. You I'm are. excited to be here. I, I, I'm just thrilled. So before we get into our conversation about how you can help with that, I want to share with the viewers that um, this is not going to be the last time you're going to see Kathleen here on the Pathfinder show. She's actually um, going to be a new addition to the show. She is a holistic life coach and her position here will be to speak directly to kids, children that are leaving high school and heading to college and those that are already in college. So just want you to know that. So Kathleen, let me ask you first of all, um, what made you decide to get into social work? Social work for me um, really was a way to get out into the community mm -hmm. and start helping others find their way in life. Um, I saw that there was a huge need in my community for more social workers. Um, for social workers, it is basically a job where we go and help each person in their area that they need in their life. Mm -hmm. We get to work in agencies, private practices, hospitals, um, <coughs> palliative care, which is in hospice care. Mm -hmm. um, we can even be life coaches and help Wonderful. people move through. I saw an opportunity to fill that purpose in my life of always wanting to help people. Mm -hmm. I know your story. Do you want to give us a little tidbit of your story? Absolutely. So I am a domestic violence survivor. Um, I met my ex-husband at the time um, when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you know, when you're 15, you're an adolescent, you're trying to find your way. And mm -hmm. then you meet a guy and he tells you all the things that he makes you feel good and happy because mm -hmm. you're 15. Yeah. All those endorphins start running up really high. <clears throat> I didn't know that I was going to get in this relationship that was going to be 14 years later leaving a domestic violence situation. Mm -hmm. And that was physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. That process, though, um, helped me become the person I am today. I know it has. I know. Well, thank you for sharing that. So tell me, how do you work with someone when you're doing life coaching? What are the steps that you take when you're coaching? When I work with somebody, the first thing is I want to hear their story. Very good. I want to know why they're seeking help in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes people are seeking help due to circumstances in their life. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to hear what that circumstance is. I, I won't be able to understand unless I sit down and, and with them and assess Absolutely. and help them walk through that. So tell me, how did you decide to work with the transitionals? How'd that come about for you? Well, I am a mom of four, mm -hmm. so I have some transitional adults in my home. Um, and I've worked with them in the agent, certain agencies. Mm -hmm. I also saw a need that they're so confused at this time yep. and that they're on a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Um, their brain is still developing, mm -hmm. and their brain isn't done developing until the age of 26 years old. Mm -hmm. So from being an adolescent all the way to 26, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Wanting to work with adolescents to help them see that they have a purpose. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Were You're you fine. To no, no, they really need to see that they have a purpose. They do. They mm -hmm. really do. And um, what I have noticed is a lot of high schoolers and the college age group, they seem to be overlooked. I mean, we're all worried about them, you know, when they're in kindergarten, when they're in yeah. elementary school. And, and I know that middle school is a big deal, mm -hmm. um, but it seems like when they hit um, high school uh, to college, they're just kind of, of lost and there's really no one to guide them and to direct them. Mm -hmm. So I am just so grateful to have you on the show um, speaking to them and helping them to get through the process and, and guiding them through that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about some things that I have noticed about these particular this particular age group. Right. And I think that you are probably an expert in this area. Mm -hmm. And 
talk about how um, the gut and the brain connect in, and, and what our kids need to know. Just wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so important. So the gut and brain connection, um, science has found so many research behind the gut and brain connection. Mm -hmm. Adolescents diet for one. <laughs> <laughs> isn't the best. So why not start teaching them at a young age so they don't get these unhealthy habits of processed foods, sodas, just that junk, su junky, sugary mm -hmm. foods that are out there. And by doing that, I want to work with the family as well because there's a connection with how the family eats, you know, is how the child's going to eat later on in life. Mm -hmm. The gut and brain connection helps with hormones. It helps with sleep. It helps mm -hmm. with moods. It um, helps with keeping you on basically a stable road where you're not going to be experiencing that fight and flight, which is anxiety. Mm -hmm. And serotonin is in our gut. That is where. What is serotonin? Serotonin is the happy hormone, and that we make ninety percent of that in our gut. I didn't know that. I thought it had to do with light. Mm -mm. No, we have many neurotransmitters in the gut that is created. And so that's why we call it the gut and brain connection. So 85% of the immunity is in the gut and 90% of the serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter, is in the gut, which helps bring it up when your gut's good. But with our teenagers drinking soda and all, all, all the Starbucks and the coffee places. And, and the, the dollar the menu at the fast food right. places. Um, what happens is after a while, the gut can only take on so much of that to ward off the offenders and starts bad bacteria starts building up in the gut. Mm -hmm. Weight gain, sleep problems, um, ADHD issues, um, anxiety, depression, insomnia, all that starts creating a battle zone for the person's and gut. And needless to say, in my opinion, um, they start to self-medicate, which takes them mm -hmm. down a whole other path, in my opinion. Absolutely. Because uh, so many of them think, and, and I know that it's, uh, I think smoking weed is legal in some places, but mm -hmm. they, so many of them think that that's all they need and that's just going to soothe them. Mm -hmm. But if they only knew, in my opinion, you correct right. me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. exercise and eating right can really help to cut that anxiety. I know it helps me, mm -hmm. personally. Um, exercise, getting one, getting out in the sun, building okay. up that vitamin D. If you are outside for a good 15 minutes without any sunscreen, you're going to get that vitamin D. And then I definitely tell people to put on sunscreen after 15 minutes. Um, also, exercising. What a wonderful way to build up those endorphins in, in your body. And those endorphins are going to help lift your mood. Okay. Serotonin levels as you're exercising is going to lift your mood. Okay. Um, and eating healthy, eating clean, good food, and kind of reducing the sugar intake, taking the bag of chips away and replacing it with crunchy vegetables like celery, apples, um, carrots, even the, the grapes, because they kind of pop, right. and it's sweet. Right. That's a better place replacement than the bag of chips and the granola bars, because believe it or not, granola bars is filled with sugar. You have to read the label. Yeah, you do. Um, and so that's what I always suggest to parents when they're asking me, what should I do and how would I help my child have a better um, eating habits? And what I find is when you teach that to the parents, they mm -hmm. teach it to their children mm -hmm. and then it's an ongoing positive habitual behavior starts being created. Okay. All right, so let's look at a scenario where we've got um, a high schooler who is getting ready to embark on the college journey. Mm. And let's yeah. say that, you know, they suffer from anxiety and, you know, just the thought of it is already going to make it peak. Mm -hmm. And um, what, how would you coach them, you know, to, to, to make that transition? Mm. What would that look like? I would want to sit down and, and ask them, when do they feel the most anxious? Okay. What is their morning routine looking like in the morning? Okay. How do they start their day? Because that's the first thing. Are they waking up and rushing to their class on the way, stopping at the union hall where the students go to get their breakfast and coffee? Mm -hmm. Or are they drinking as coffee mm -hmm. and then not eating anything? Mm -hmm. those, are, those are the ways I look at it when I'm working with someone in college years. Okay. The reason for me working with them like that 
because if they're just running on adrenaline, yep. that adrenaline is going to finally burn out, cortisol levels are going to start rising, and then their anxiety levels are going to go through the roof, and then they're finding that they're not sleeping at night because their cortisol levels are so, so used high. to running. Yeah, and then the, the whole adrenal fatigue thing just kind of slips in the door too. Yes. So, all right, so we, we've got that piece. Mm -hmm. As a, what's the difference between a life coach and a therapist or counselor? Um, I, I know that one has to do with, I don't know, I, I guess being licensed or what have you or a degree. I don't know. Explain to me what's the difference in that because here you're going to be doing the life coach piece. Of, right. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is at this point, um, when you can get a master's degree in social work, you are allowed to do some types of life coaching. Okay. But not therapeutic. Got it. And therapeutic is more for a professional therapist that is fully licensed. Mm -hmm. Or when you become a licensed graduate social worker, which I'm going to be doing soon myself, okay. you still need to be supervised for three years. Okay. Um, that way you have someone to go back to if you've run into some issues or have some questions. You have that support. Okay. And then when you become a full licensed therapist, then you're able to do the therapeutic the pieces. Um, pieces where you can work in hospitals and help people, psychiatric help, mm -hmm. um, really more towards the mental health field. Um, where a life coach is really there for people with some mild difficulties in their life mm -hmm. and then needing that support and goal setting. That's exactly what I wanted to know. So you help your clients to, uh, obviously, I heard you say you sit with them Absolutely. and you're extracting information from them mm -hmm. and then you help them to set goals. How mm -hmm. often, when you're doing life coaching, how often do you speak with them or see them or, or do they set goals? What does that look like? In the beginning, I ask them, what are they looking for? Okay. Because as I always tell my clients, I'm not a mind reader. I need to know what is exactly. Give me specifics. Because without specifics, I don't know how to help them. Mm -hmm. So say someone is just trying to learn how to say no more often. Okay. And they're more of a yes person, and they find when they were saying yes all the time is a barrier in their life. We start off with simple goals of how to build up the confidence to learn how to say no. Okay. And people are always surprised that um, when, I, when I talk about that, well, why don't people just say no? It's not that easy. No, it's not. It's not. What's their background? Were they always a, a yes person? Does someone always make them that yes person? Mm -hmm. Did they feel bullied or scared or intimidated? Mm -hmm. So I start breaking it down very small, simple steps. Very good because you can't eat a whole elephant at one time. Oh, that's my famous little saying. I love saying that because you can't. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the way I approach it. And okay. it, it's over four to eight weeks, depending on how many times a person wants to um, come in and work on those goals. Okay, so they, they would need to come to, to see you. Do you give them any phone time, any uh, I, Skype? I, mm -hmm. or what, uh, what do you do um, other than in person? Um, if they're distance mm -hmm. from me. I would want to do um, Skyping. Um, there's another uh, app called Zoom Meeting, which I would send them a link yeah. and they can come to me um, through the Zoom Meeting, conference mm -hmm. meeting, um, or they can do a simple phone call. Mm -hmm. um, I like the Skyping in the Zoom Meeting because I get to see them. Absolutely. Um, because people don't always show or present over the phone. Of course not. And yeah. when I'm seeing a person, I'm not just listening to their influection in their voice. I'm actually looking at their nonverbal cues, their body language. How are they sitting? When I say something to them, what does their body tell me when I say something that has to do with um, confidence? Do they shift in their seat? Mm -hmm. um, or do they lean forward and they want to know more what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That body language is very important to me. Okay. All right. And so your clients are, give us the age again. I know we said high school, but are we um, recently graduated from high school or we see someone as early as ninth grade, freshman, up to Mm, I would say um, 16 and on. 16 and on, okay. Yeah, between 16 and 26 is a good um, age range okay. because at this time, the person um, is trying to find their self, mm -hmm. their identity, but they have their peers. Mm -hmm. They're comparing themselves to other people. Um, they're comparing themselves to 
uh, colleges, when they get to the college, when they step on campus, am I going to be as good as that person over there? It, it's a lot of stress. Yeah, it is. I, yeah, it is. It's a great deal of stress. Mm -hmm. So, let me, um, you're a holistic life coach. Mm -hmm. What's the difference from just a regular health um, life coach and a holistic life coach? Are you helping them with diet? Um, what's the difference? Um, with the holistic pieces, it's mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And where we go back to the brain and gut connection. Mm -hmm. the, the brain and the gut are very much, they work together. Mm -hmm. And the mind and body is so important. So what you eat is really what you are. So, yeah, it's, it's true. It's not a myth. Okay. So if you're eating fast food all the time, you're eating very high processed foods, very high salty foods, sugary foods, they show that that actually brings down the brain function. And then it brings that sleepiness, um, fogginess to their way they're thinking, that they can't clarify their thoughts anymore. Um, but when they're eating healthy and clean food, it, it's a reverse effect. Mm -hmm. More clarity, they're more focused, they're not feeling anxious, their gut's getting all the good um, bacteria that we want in the gut and everything's starting to balance out. So I really do feel working with people on their diets helps also their mentality. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more because um, there was a time when I ate really, really bad because mm -hmm. I was a new mom and I was always just doing this and doing that and um, I, just, I just crashed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I totally did and I, my doctor, who's a holistic and Western doctor, she, she does both, we address the diet and yeah. a few other things, um, you know, mm -hmm. some counseling pieces were needed. Yeah. And um, because, you know, you know, this show is, is, is not a uh, religious show at all, but I am indeed a Christ follower. And I say that to say that, you know, I had to address some spiritual pieces as well. Mm -hmm. And because it can't be all spiritual, you know, it can't be all just the therapist, it just can't just be the doctor. That's why I say talking to mind, body, and spirit, all three of those things have to come together. So what, you know, whatever your faith is or your belief is, you've got to bring that into play. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. In my opinion, that's really important. So um, I wanted to ask you, um, how often do you find that you need to work alongside or pull in the parents? Does that happen very often when you're coaching? In the beginning, you will mm -hmm. pull the parents in separately from the adolescent. Okay. Um, and then you talk to the adolescent separately. separately. And the reason we do that as, as a life coach, even as therapists, and mm -hmm. I, I've learned that from a lot of the therapists that I've worked with, you want to get a take on what's happening um, in the family. So if you pull everyone in at the same time, what's going to happen is mom's got something to say, dad's got something to say, and then the child's over there saying nothing. Mm -hmm. Because the, the child feels like, I don't have a voice anyway, so I'm not gonna say mm -hmm. anything. So pulling them apart, you kind of get a sense of some of what the parents are dealing with, and then the child will end up saying everything that they're dealing with because they don't have the parents in the same room. I believe you, I, I know that happens for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, sort of back to the diet piece. Now I don't know if this is related and I don't even know if you know, but um, I'm looking at some of the way, and I guess some adults do it too, so it might be all of us. I'm thinking about the, the teens and you know, they get into their cars and they are just driving like they're, oh. like they're like they're in an ambulance or something. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's just a part of what's going on in their brain with their, their food and their lifestyle and all of that stuff just shows up on the road. Mm -hmm. And I, does that make a contribution possibly, do you think, that the whole thing of eating? And it, it, it just, I just think that it's just really sporadic sometimes. Mm -hmm. You'll find young people mm -hmm. just like all over the place on the road and it's really really scary mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that if they change their diet and got some other healthy components into their life then maybe we would see less of that as well. Well it also um, is their environment. They're mirroring what they deal with when they go home. Wow. So if their parents are like that they're just going to do the exact same thing their parents are doing. Mm -hmm. So if you're a parent and you're saying don't text and drive, don't be eating and drinking, but you do it what does that say to the child? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're doing it, 
why are you yelling at me for doing the exact same thing you're doing? So we have to look at that piece too. Mm -hmm. um, we live in a fast-paced world. Mm -hmm. um, high school students are filled with so much stress versus when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, the type of testing they have to do, when they have to start looking at colleges, um, the PSAT, which is the standardized testing in the beginning to take the real SAT, uh, peer pressure, it, it's just a different dynamics. So again, their brain doesn't fully develop till they're 26 years of age. Mm -hmm. So they're impulsive, mm -hmm. they're more risk takers, mm -hmm. and they still feel that they're very immortal. Yeah, they do, they still feel Yes, that and I feel if you have more of an open conversation with children, you'll see a difference. Put down your phone. You know, if you ever see parents at restaurants with their children and no one's talking because everybody's on their phone, everyone's looking at their phone. Can you imagine what it would be like if you just threw the phones in the middle and you actually looked your child in the eyes and be interested in what they're talking about? Mm -hmm. Huge change, huge change in behavior just with that because now they're feeling, wow, my mom or my dad is interested mm -hmm. in what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I have somewhat of a voice and I have someone listening to me. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, and I'm hearing a, a, that more and more a lot now about mm -hmm. putting down the phone. I mm -hmm. think that we're starting to realize, yes, the phone is quite valuable, it's helpful, but we're just losing that communication. And um, I'm hearing that from a lot of people like yourself. Mm -hmm. So that must be a change that's gonna be coming about. What are some of the ways, in your opinion, that um, we can help um, this particular age group not to spend so much time on their phones and, and get involved in other activities. I know now, um, I see in the grocery stores and a lot of places, they have these little um, books now where you can just color. And mm -hmm. I guess that helps with anxiety. Medallias. Yeah, is that what, yeah mm -hmm. okay. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something that would help? I mean, because mm -hmm. you're still holding something, I'm thinking. You still get to do mm -hmm. something. So what are some other ways? Or can, do you have anything that comes to mind that could help them to put the phone down? Get outside. Okay. I've parents, heard that too. parents need to be an example of that. So the parents need to go outside first. The parents need to go outside too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because what I have seen is parents are also addicted to their cell phones, mm -hmm. and so instead of listening to their child talking or even going outside with their child, they're on the cell phone. Are they getting mad at their child for interrupting because they need to post something on Facebook? Is that more important than listening to your child? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I have um, been actually uh, guilty of that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, I can't, oh no. And I had to put my phone down. And that this, okay, I'm very sorry, I'll apologize. Because I realize it's rude and you're disengaging yourself with your child. Mm -hmm. And when they're in high school, it goes by so fast. Before you know it, they're graduating. And then they're in, in college. Mm -hmm. And then they're gone out of your they're house. Gone. And whatever happens outside of the house, you, you don't know. Because they're no longer in your, your house. They're no longer under your care. Yeah. So get that connection. Open up the lines of communication. And s you'll start seeing a huge difference in their behavior. And get outside. Because parents are stressed out too. Yes, we are. Yes. They're stressed out. They're they're overworked. Some parents are overworked and underpaid, so then they're worried about the finances and how they're going to make things work together and how they're going to pay this bill, or maybe they might have to not pay that bill just to pay another bill, and plus they're trying to raise a family. Mm -hmm. And then they have a teenager who knows everything and, and is trying to step into their independence. And going outside, taking a walk, doing activities actually kind of brings things down and mm -hmm. centers the family. Mm -hmm. And then teaching the family how to eat well also helps center the family and people they start feeling better and they start feeling connected the phones need to go down and the um the video games and the computer games also is an addiction so i'm hearing you say we need to um really go back to some of the basic things very basic keep it simple i always say kiss keep it simple mm -hmm. sweetie yeah that's the kiss so parents hear that they're like I know but this and this we all have excuses just do it just do just it Just get it done mm -hmm. yeah and um, stop avoiding you know the responsibility of having children because mm -hmm. you know they need us and I again we focus on our children when they are in um, elementary school yes but I think that when they're in high school they need us just as much 
Yes, yeah. yes, they do need us in high school because what they feel is um, lost. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't yeah. know what their identity is. And they act like they do, but when you talk to them alone without the parents, they feel pressured by the parents mm -hmm. to know what they need to do already. They feel pressured by the teachers. They feel pressure to fit in with their peers. Yeah, they do. And there is the piece of alcohol addiction, cigarette addiction, um, cannabis addiction, and there's, I can list a whole other things that they can be addicted to. Yeah. Um, so really getting that connection back with their family is really the base, really basic mm -hmm. for the family to thrive as a whole. Okay. And that's where the holistic piece comes in. You want to deal with the mind, body, and spirit, the whole part of a family. So um, you've heard that. This is what Kathleen is going to be doing here on the Pathfinder Show. Um, we're planning to have her here twice a month. She may be here in the studio live, or she might come to you by way of Skype here on the show. And right now, Kathleen, I want you to, um, to look into the camera, your camera, and mm -hmm. just share with them where uh, they can get in touch with you. And you know what? I forgot to mention this. I know that you are also uh, in Plexus, so feel free to mention that as well. So there's your camera. Absolutely. So you can reach me at holisticslifecoachkathleen at gmail.com. I am also an independent Plexus ambassador where I believe the supplementations of this company um, is very, very quality, high quality supplementations. And that website, you can go on and check me out there, is shopmyplexus.com forward slash Kathleen Stark. And that's it. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I really, really, really appreciate everything that you shared today. We could just go on and on. We could. And we're going to have um, a lot more opportunity. And I really do thank you so much for taking this spot here in the Pathfinder Show to help to provide um, a path for our younger people. And uh, I look forward to seeing you a lot more. And I know. I am, and I love you dearly. Aww. So. Um, this is the Pathfinder Show um, for today, and I hope you heard everything that Kathleen had to say, and please continue to tune in. You can find me on Facebook, Tony Gorman, and if you desire to be on the show, or if you've got some ideas or some thoughts, or if you even want to reach out uh, to connect with Kathleen, you've got her information as well. Again, I am Tony Gorman, your Pathfinder, and thanks so much for watching today. <laughs>